exhaust systems go. Clear for liftoff. Baby, we're back talking fights UFC 299 14 fights two five rounders only one weight miss CJ Vergara everyone already weighed in missed by one pound so that fight will be good should keep all 14 fights as long as we don't have a Rosas Jr. or something pull out after lock time I'm not going to talk that into existence though appreciate everyone hanging out like always I know a lot of people watch on playback y'all watching live though you get a little bonus we are doing a monthly giveaway um, I want to make sure I get the name right from a member. I want to say it's I have six roles. Let me get it for sure right. I have six roles. That is correct. He's a member of ShippingNation.com. Wanted to give away one to the people for this big MMA UFC 299 card. So if you're not a member uh, and you're in YouTube chat right now, just put in YouTube chat. Why you? Why do you think you deserve that membership? How would you use it, et cetera, stuff like that. We will pick a winner toward the end of the show. But again, shout out to you. I have six roles, free monthly membership for the people and no better time to check out what we have to offer. PGA showdown, best in the business, MMA this weekend, NASCAR, great NASCAR team, the game. I know he's watching this MMA show. Shout out to you. MMA Saturdays, NASCAR Sundays, NBA, of course, still full force. MLB will be here before you know it. No better time. Jump over shippingnation.com. Plenty of options to try. We have weekly monthly, six-month, and annual packages. And if you use that promo code HOOP15, you get even cheaper, 15% off any of those packages. $58 a month if you use that code HOOP15 for all the sports, for Discord access, projections, best ownership in the industry from MMA for our guy, Big Marley. And we'll actually show you a little bit of what we offer premium. We'll show you little tier rankings, a fight breakdown on the slate plan, fight rankings, et cetera. Not going to show you the core reports, but we'll get into that in a sec, show you what we do all offer in the MMA streets. Throw it to my man, Big Marley. It's been long enough. How you doing on this Friday morning, afternoon? It's afternoon by you. I'm good, man. I already had my workout, working on the fight rankings right now. Just cracked a nooner for this show because I'm excited for this card. We got 14 fights, which is awesome for DFS, but it's, it's a great card, man. I can't wait to watch it. Um, definitely worth the money. Anytime Dustin Poirier is a co-main event, you know it's going to be a banger card, so I can't wait. Oh, man, this is so, so good. Like, maybe even better than 300? I don't know. It's pretty close. It's, I mean, the main card especially. Like, Blake, you think so? You think it's pretty yeah. close? I, I, I mean, think I'm more excited for it, but maybe because it's closer. But Yeah. I mean, see. man, this card is so good. Like, RDA, Gamrot buried pretty much the prelims. Cuda Lava, Linz, like, so many bangers throughout this card. And it's fun for DFS. I feel pretty good. The fights I want to target, the fights I don't, where to get leverage, where not to. So I'm very pumped for it for sure. Shark's in here. What's going on, Shark? Eric, our NASCAR guy. Let's have a big weekend. My brother, Tyler. What's going on, Tyler? Hope you're doing well. Bring the noise. I appreciate that. Uh, Camera bro in here. Dakota in here as well. Jake, our man Siggy, Jasmine in here, all the people in here. Hope you all doing well. We do appreciate the support. Before we go fight by fight, fight, though, it's time to show you a little bit what we offer for MMA. We don't do this enough. So right here on the projections tab, uh, we have it all loaded. Names by salary, projection, ownership, point per dollar. You can sort it by projection. You can sort it by ownership. If you want to download a CSV, you can do that. Upload it elsewhere. You can uh, sort by point per dollar. And again, big thing in, or in MMA is ownership. We'll go through this. This is adjusted if Marley thinks there should be changes. Like, we'll talk through it. I think Benoit probably becomes a little higher than 44%. Sometimes Marley does change it throughout. Sheets has been tracking ownership. It's been the best in the industry since we've had it, though. Huge shout-out to Big Marley and ownership. Again, huge in MMA. It's the most important thing. It's like Showdown NBA, Showdown uh, NFL. There's only so many combinations. There's only so many fighters. Ownership, being unique, getting awesome popular builds, et cetera, is important. So, we have ownership. We have projections right there. You can download as a CSV. Next thing, core report. I'm not going to click it yet because I do know Big Marley's core is up there, but it's three core plays for a GPP for myself. 
for Big Marley. Then we have FanDuel Cash, FanDuel uh, DK Cash, three GPP or three core plays there, and then a FanDuel main GPP core as well. Prize pools are awful, but we do have that if you are on the FanDuel streets. Again, you got to be a member to check that out. Slate plan. This is where I go, break down every single fight. I only put down one. I'm not going to give, uh, I can't give it to the people. Uh, uh, the people that pay, I cannot give the whole slate plan. People will pause it, etc. But this first fight of the night, you can get it. If you want to pause it, get a little um, snippet of what my breakdown is. We'll touch on this though. Rosewood, you can see right there. I have both of them tagged as overweight. This is a core. If this has, um, or if it's a core play for me, I'll take this instead of green, it'll be blue. If it's underweight, I'll take yellow for those fighters. And if it's a fade, I'll take fade. I try and make this like a 20 entry max thing. They used to have a great $3 20 entry max. I think MMA is a good MME sport. Playing one team is very tough. So you get my breakdowns, my tags on all the fights. Going over to Big Marley's fight rankings. He does the same thing. Um, something similar. He does a shorter breakdown. He gives the prediction. All of it. I can't give it to all. There we go. So. Who's going to win the exact method, which round and the method he thinks they will win. And then he ranks them. So these stars right here, Marley mentions it a lot. Fighter with confidence. So the higher the stars, five star means it's his favorite fight. You cannot get better than five stars. Four stars is still a good fight you want to target. Now, if there's a two star, which there was one up there, that means he doesn't like it as much. Not only does he rank the fights in terms of fight environment to one star, two star, three star, four star, five star. He then puts in the arrows for each fighter how much interest in them. So right here, as you can see, out of six total per fight, he has five star for Almabayev, one for Vergara. So that's saying he likes the fight environment, four star, but he just likes the Almabayev side, not Vergara side. So it's very easy to read a nice snippet breakdown right there. Slate plan, fight rankings. I think that's the best in the business right here. Little bias on the, on both sides here, but you get Marley's thoughts, you get my thoughts. We're targeting fights. You need ownership. It's not more so I think this guy's going to win, at least how I play MMA. It's I think this guy fight's going to score well. How do I build a roster? When I win, I share with as little as pop, little people as possible, and I want upside. So that's the fight rankings done by Big Marley. That'll all be up. Tier rankings, almost there. Then we'll get into the fights. Only did the upper tier, but this is similar. What we have, like an NBA slate plan, upper tier, mid-tier, lower tier builds. 8,600 and above, 7,700 to 8,500, 7,600 or less. I rank them in order. My favorites, a little snippet of why my notes are right here. That's a very easy place. If you need a value, 7,600 or less, fill in the lineup. You can see my favorites right there as well as slate plan, fight rankings. And slate info, this is free. This is just the basic Vegas props, their weight class, et cetera. Even if you're not a member, you can hop in. Check that out. This is updated as well. Anything to add to that, Big Marley? Again, everything will be up um, after the show. All my fights are done, but I like talking to you because I make some changes throughout. But, man, I mean, you're talking $58 a month for every single sport. You can argue this could be $58 a month, and some places are close to that. So, hey, not hating on anything. I think we have the best MMA con in the industry. Ownership's the most important. And shout out to you. I'm not taking any credit for that. You are great there. So, yeah, anything uh, on that, or then we'll get fight by fight. Nah, man, great breakdown of the site, and it's really just extra. I mean, you get all the big sports, NFL, you get PGA with the best guys around. Um, so there's no reason not to try it out. We're giving away a free one on the show. Uh, so if you haven't heard already, put in uh, a reason why you want the free membership, and we'll pick one at the end of the show. But yeah, good breakdown of it. Cannot wait for it. Hopefully, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure we'll see some Ship It logos at the top. Uh, oh, yeah come the end of saturday yeah it's a good card i'm pumped for it we're time to make some money though hit that like hit that subscribe appreciate everyone watching live watching on playback as always and again we will be giving away a monthly membership somewhere near the end of the show one of the main card fights probably one of the starts there we'll give it away in chat so if you're not a member put in chat why you why you want one let's get going though first fight of the night kind of got a glimpse if you saw my breakdown if you saw marley's breakdown marina morose joanne wood 9,000 for Moreau, 7,200 for Wood. Uh, Moreau's minus 230, Calderwood, uh, or Wood, Joanne Wood, excuse me, plus 195 on the way back. This fight's plus 160 to finish. All the finish equity on the Moreau side at plus 170, though. Uh, Wood, plus 1,000 inside the distance. So a little rematch from 2015, which was Moreau's UFC debut. First round armbar. She scored 95 
in that one. Didn't even secure a takedown. I mean, pulled guard, got the uh, submission. I like this fight, as you can see what I had in my slate plan. You look at ownership in this fight, Moreau's has to be low owned. So what we have this fight at ownership, Moreau's 14%, Joanne Wood 12%. There's no way people can get to Moreau's when Benoit St. Denis 100 less, Sean O'Malley's 200 more, Despain's 300 more. So like those three right there are going to all be 40% plus the other guys like a Kyler Phillips or Moreau is a Macy Barber in this range, all going to be low owned. And she's by far my favorite of those three. I just mentioned, I think she has the most upside. She's taking some money in on the money line. She's taking some money on the inside, the distance prop open plus 300. Now all the way down to plus 170. already beat her once in round one. I mean, man, if Moreau's wins at 9K, there's definitely finishing upside there at low ownership. Then on the Wood side, I always enjoy playing Wood because she's usually a pretty big dog, so she's pretty cheap, and she just throws a ton of balls. She's always doing something. 6.93 significant strikes per minute, 1.57 takedowns per 15. I will say, well, she hasn't scored less than 89 in any of her eight USC wins as well. So if she wins, she scores. She's getting up there in age. She did mention this is a retirement fight as well. Words you don't usually like to hear. But man, women's MMA, you almost always dog or pass, it feels like. If Wood wins, I think it's going to be on the optimal, at least has a good shot with the volume she throws. Rose has finishing upside, plus 170. I'll throw it to you, but yeah, this fight's going to be low owned. I'm going to be overweight on this one. Hope we get an optimal performance to start it up. Yeah, I'm. I kind of like this one as well. Um, especially because it's, it shouldn't get too much ownership. Like you mentioned, Moroz is kind of in there with a bunch of killers where it's really just hard to get to her, but she did already finish wood in the first round. Um, and wood has been submitted five times in her career. All five were in the first round. Um, so there's, there's a couple props I like on this fight as well, because I do think that Wood just doesn't really eat shots as well anymore. She wears it a lot more on her face as too. And then once someone grabs a hold of a submission, she kind of looks for her way out. And I think if things go bad for her early in this fight, she probably gets submitted. And Moreau's by submission in round one, at least before we started, was pl uh, plus 650. I think that's a, a pretty good number right there. And then Rose by submission period is plus 330. So I like both of those. But – we have that the fight is supposed to go the distance. What do we have? Uh, like minus 200 almost oh. that the fight is supposed to go yep. to decision. And if that's the case, give me wood all day at this line. I, I think I would maybe even favor her slightly if I knew this was going to go all three rounds. The worry, I mean, not the worry, I guess the issue is that wood, this is going to be her retirement fight. And those rarely work out well for fighters when they're up there in age. Um, so that's kind of why I think Moreau's going to get the submission. That's my ultimate pick Moreau's by submission in round one. And since the ownership's not going to be there, I, I think even if she gets, you know, 98, 99 points, it, maybe that's not enough, but at the ownership, I'm kind of willing to take that, those chances. So I'll be overweight to Moreau's as well. But like I mentioned, man, I would much rather have a wood ticket if this was going to go the distance and she's never scored less than 89 in any of her wins. She scored 105 in her last decision win, which is going to break the slate if she can do anything near that. So I definitely want to be overweight to wood as well. I put this as a three star because I wanted to put it as a four star, but the ownership's not going to be there. So I feel like three star is going to get us overweight enough, but I'm really close to a four star. I could be, see me being fairly heavy on this fight overweight to both sides. But Moreau's by submission, uh, by submission in round one is the ultimate pick. Some other props I like: Wood by decision plus two seventy five. Um, and then there's there's this uh thing on DraftKings where you can go to, I don't even remember which tab it's under, but the uh, outcome is Joanne Wood by decision or Marina Rose by submission. You can get that at even money. I like that. I think that hits more than half the time. And then money line decision only, which means it's a push if there's a finish from either side, but Joanne Wood plus 165 on that. Bunch of props I like on this fight. Should be a good one to start off the card. But if nobody's gonna have it, let me get overweight and hopefully we can start off with a with a banger. Oh yeah. I mean we're both in, in agreement there. I think this be there's two women's fights on the card. Both of them favor to go the distance. Macy Barber, the other one. I think just naturally women's fights are lower owned. I think there's merit to be said like first fight on the card 
is lower owned for people that just make a couple lineups. Like they don't want to be dead. They see the inside the distance prop is supposed to go to decision. So like, yeah, first fight of the night, woman's MMA supposed to go to decision. It just can't get ownership. I mean, man, Wood, yeah, if Wood wins, probably, like, I'd feel good about 85 even, even 85 plus to start the card at 7,200. Mm -hmm. I would totally feel fine with it. And if that's not optimal, you know, that's not the reason you're not making money. And then, yeah, Marina Moreau like, she just 14% owned, already has a first round submission win, has taken plus 300 down to plus 170 inside the distance. I'm going to be overweight, 14 and 12%. I put it in the slate plan. We did, like I said, we got that little snippet if you want to pause it. I said it's the most overlooked fight that I have interest in. We're looking at like Macy Barber. We're looking at Michelle Pereira, I think's fine. Who who's the other one in that 9K range? Um Kyler Phillips, maybe. Yeah, Kyler Phillips. Yep. Like I like Moreau's way more than Macy Barber and Kyler Phillips personally. So she'll be where I'll go to get different up top and chalk your lineups. I like Wood down low. Spent a lot of time on women's MMA first fight. I'll yeah. be playing it though, and I hope it's optimal. I will say that Moreau's to win a decision is like even money. So they're saying that happens 50% of the time. And if Moreau's wins a decision, that's how this fight does not make it onto the For optimal sure. lineup. So that's the worry. We said a lot of good things, but that's definitely the worry, and it's very possible. Yeah, I mean, we said a lot. It's 12% of four, like one of the lower owned total combination ownerships on the fight, too. So this is a hot take, I guess, probably compared to what people are going to do. Being overweight, I guess, is a hot take. But yeah, definitely this fight can bust. There's no doubt about that. Enough on that fight, though. Let's keep it rolling. Uh, Asu Almabai, the biggest favorite on the card, takes on CJ Vergara. Minus 575 is Almabai, plus 425 on the way back is CJ. Again, CJ, the only one to miss weight by one pound. Fight should be good to go. I think like 30% uh, fine for the purse. Minus 165 for the, this fight to finish. Most of that on the Almabai side, minus 135 inside the distance. CJ Vergara, plus 675. Ownership in this one. So Almabai, the highest. Price fighter on the card, 31%. We have CJ, lowest price on the card. We have him the lowest owned at 4%. I mean, this one's pretty easy for me. I'll be playing on Mabai and teams I can get him. Minus 135 inside the distance. Primary wrestler. I mean, I guess I'll throw it to you on this. Like, I'm not playing CJ. I like on Mabayev. I'm not going to jam on Mabayev, but like, this Spain's going to be higher owned. Benoit Saint Denis is going to be higher owned. Sean O'Malley's probably going to be higher owned. So even as the biggest favorite expected to finish as a primary wrestler, like low 30% is not crazy by any means. So I like him. Like Joanne Wood can get you there. Ola J check. There's a nice lot, enough live dogs. If Poirier or Cheeto win, there's way more options to get up here. So I'll be playing some on Mabayev. I'm not going to like force myself to get over 30 or like under 30. I'm good with whatever I get. But he has his much. Uh, he could put up a Ludovic Klein scores last week and you absolutely need him. I mean, I, I'm not going to say most upside on the card, but I'd probably say Benoit has the most upside with the, that being five rounds. But I think he has the most three-round upside in this fight. Yeah, I'll throw it to you. But does CJ get up when he gets taken down? Because that's when the real ceiling hits. If Almabaya can get 12 of them and just chain them, or does Vergara land his back and you're only getting like three to four in a decision? Man, I feel like Almabaev wouldn't be willing to chain wrestle that much because I think he could strike in this matchup if he wanted to. I think a striking match is close between these two, but that's what Vargara needs to, to win. But the only way he's going to score well would be a knockout. I don't want to really bank on that happening. And if he does win a striking-based decision, he might not even 10x his $6,700 salary. So I, I think I'm just going to X Vergara out of my player pool, not going to use any of him. But yeah, Almabayev, I mean, the issue is $9,500. He's also got a lot of people priced below him that could outscore him. But he is projected to get a submission in this fight. And even if he does go all 15 minutes, if, if he's not getting 12 takedowns, I would still think he's getting three or four and maybe getting 10 plus minutes of control time, can land some ground strikes and possibly get there. But the ceilings on this card is tough. Like there's so many high ceilings on this card. And if I don't have to have them, I'm fine not getting them because there's a lot of people that I could pay down, you know, a few hundred dollars less for if that's what I need to do on this card. So I'm not sure. I built a uh, uh, maybe ten or so hand built lineups, and I do have some Al Mabayev. I'm guessing I'll end up being overweight or around the field on him would be my guess. But my pick is for him to get a submission at some point in this fight. The earlier, the better, probably because I don't think he would be a guy that's getting ten plus type uh, ten plus takedowns. 
Okay. Yeah, fair enough. That I'll probably be again around the field, I think. Like there's other fights I care more about. Like I want to get dialed in for my script. And like if I had 20% Alma Baev and I liked everything else, sure. If I had 40% Alma Baev and I liked everything, I'd also be totally fine with that. Yeah. Like he's the highest priced guy. Like Benoit Saint Denis in a vacuum looks better to me. There's still like Gamrot, who's gonna be maybe like 10% maybe lower own for 100 less. With wrestling upside too, I do prefer Almabayev in a vacuum there, but the upper tier, I guess I'm. There's multiple guys where I'm totally fine with, uh, depending on like where I am with salary, and I'd be fine dropping. I'm like I will say even so, Almabayev. Just say a lineup leaves zero with Almabayev. I guess this is a great transition right into this next fight. Uh, Robelis to Spain, Josh Parisian, 9300 is to Spain, 9500 is Almabayev. You're gonna see lineups that leave 200. And it's still more chalky, more dupes with the to Spain than Alma Bayev because, all right, we'll get right there. He's minus 340. Parisian's plus 280. 9,300 is to Spain. 6,900 is Parisian. This fight's minus 1,400 to finish. The Spain's minus 295 in round one. My, or no, excuse me, minus 295 inside the distance. Minus 240 in round one. Parisian on the other side, plus 300 uh, inside the distance, which isn't bad at all. Then we go to the ownership in this fight. This Bain we have at 41%. And I, again, I wouldn't even be surprised if it was a little higher owned right there. And then Josh Parisian, we have at 8%. Now I'll throw it to you on this. Actually, I'll, I'll give a couple thoughts. So this Bain, I mean, if you haven't seen this guy fight, his last four, three fights, four seconds, three seconds, 12 seconds. That's how, how, the length of time it took him to knock out his opponent. Due to 6'7", 87-inch reach, which is the UFC um, – the longest in UFC history, background in Taekwondo, but he's only 4-0 as a pro. Like, he has fought cans, has had nothing. He hasn't had to go through any adversity. Josh Parisian's cheeks. It's pretty obvious what the UFC is doing. Like, oh, all right, who can who can Despain look really good against? Let's give him a slow plotting. I guess the dude's meh in every single area. Like, Parisian isn't really scary. However, if Parisian wins this fight, it's because Despain's just a total fraud. And, like, maybe he gets taken down as nothing off his back. Maybe he gasses after one minute. I mean, this line open, minus 500. It's now minus 340. Money has come in on the Parisian side. What I know I'm going to do in this fight, I'm definitely going to be a donkey and play a good amount of Spain. Like, minus 240 in round one. Parisian stinks. He, first round win bonus is definitely in play. I'm definitely eating that chalk. Josh Parisian, though, at 8%, I mean, they might be the easiest overweight take on the slate for me. When he wins, I just don't see how he's not on the optimal. Like, minus 1,400, minus 285, under round one. Maybe Despain's just a total fraud. Parisian survives his best shots. Maybe he gets a takedown. I just think at plus 270, it's about, what, a 27% win uh, equity? I think 25 of that is probably going to be optimal. So right there, you're looking at 3x the field if you're going off of just numbers and logic like you do with some of your stuff. Yeah, I'm probably going to be more overweight to Parisian than to Spain, but it's a great fight to target, and I will have a ton of it. So that's what I got. What about you? Yeah, I mean, this is what everyone says, and I agree. The pick is to Spain. He's going to get carted off when to Spain touches him. But when if Parisian wins, I mean, you have a chance at solo ship and a lot of money. And if he wins, it feels like it has to be optimal. So, yeah, I already talked in this one. To Spain's the pick. First round knockout, I will be more overweight to Parisian at this ownership. Yeah, I'm going to load up on it. Um, I mean, Despain, <laughs> he's the type of fighter I like to fade. You know, his last three fights are a combined 19 seconds. Like, we learned that he can hit hard. Um, but the fight before that, it was like the very end of the first round. He didn't look all that great leading up to it. It was his debut. So, like, this guy is really green in the sport. He's a uh, like an Olympic taekwondo striker. So, like, I wouldn't expect anything on the ground from this guy at all. And if, if this fight makes it out of the first round, he's off the optimal lineup unless he's getting multiple knockdowns along the way. Because if it's a second rounder, let's give him like 10 strikes. That's probably all he's going to have. One knockdown, no takedowns. That's just not going to be enough. Um, so I'm going to be heavy on him. But at the same time, my first lineup that I built, I had I, I had him in it. But I had a little bit of money left over. So I built the same lineup and I put um, Alma Baev in it as well. So... I'm going to be similar to those two with my ownership. I might duplicate a lot of their lineups. But 
man, I, I definitely worry about this guy, a four and guy who's got like five minutes of total fight time. Prishan has got power too. I don't really know what this guy's, I mean, not power. I wouldn't say Prishan has power, but against like no, he weighs, he weighs a lot in the end. He'll be throwing. So all those guys have power, but yeah, I know what you meant. Yeah. He's a big boy, yeah. but I mean, if Prishan gets one takedown, I don't know that Desp uh, Despain has anything to offer on, off his back, and I don't know that he can get up. And if Parisian wins this fight, I think he breaks the slate. He has like 120 point upside. Whereas to Spain, for him to get 120 points, he needs a knockout in the first 60 seconds. Which I mean, shit, what are the the odds of him getting that? To be honest, I wouldn't mind looking that up. To be honest, uh, and then just matching that, or at least getting, you know, a minimum of that in my lineups. Because a 60 second knockout puts him on the optimal lineup, Definitely. but a 61 second knockout, he's still got to compete That's with all worst. those other people. Yeah, it's so. not the worst, but you're you are a little rattled if you get the 61. Yeah. Don't miss it by one for sure. So I think I'm so I'm the same as you. I'm gonna have a lot of Despain, and I would rather have him in a single entry. I think, but I'm gonna have more leverage to the Parisian side. If I if I have 15 percent Parisian, that puts me almost double the field or so. So I'm I'm definitely cool with that. Where I, you'd have to get like 85 percent to double the field on Despain, which is gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, I will say in the single entry stuff though, I wouldn't be surprised to see even more of a gap, like especially like the 555 and stuff like that. Like this fame might could be 60%. Parisian could be like eight. Like at those numbers, whereas like we at Lotto, we have like 42, eight or whatever. I think you'll see lower in the Lotto. And I think guys like Benoit and Despain will be even higher in the single entry stuff. And I think Parisian probably will be higher. Like, again, it feels like a sharp game. I think it's sharp. So I guess I'm saying it like that. Maybe it's not sharp when Parisian gets like four, but the leverage plays like if Sheets was in here, I think he'd be talking about Parisian, talking about Poirier, I do think those plays are a little higher owned in the like the 555 and stuff, but I think the Benoit's and the Despain's could be like 15, 20% higher than you see in the flagship as well. So, uh, and I also kind of said that wrong. Like a, a single entry contest, yeah, I don't really care, I guess, which one of them is in there. I'm probably going to have one of them though for sure. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, if I was just going to make one lineup only on the whole card, yeah, let me get Despain in there because I don't want it to be over on the third fight yeah. of the night when Parisian scores two points or something like that. Um, I would probably I'm picking, be over. You know, 20 lineups and then I'm picking any one of them for my single entry. Yeah, I wouldn't be against using a, a Parisian there just to get different. Yeah, no, for sure. Like my night will probably be over after call. There were, I, it won't be over over because I play a lot of lineups. That's what I I think the best way to go MMA is. But I'll have a lot of Moreau's wood fight and it'll probably be a Moreau's decision and i'll be holding on to a couple strings so yeah i mean great fight to target though minus 1400 in a tier of its own and inside the distance prop under one and a half minus 285 like one of these fighters is probably optimal i'm not necessary i'm not going to make a rule to have at least one of them in all my lineups i put the rule it's in the slate plan it's not a hard rule by any means but at least two of that fight the lens fights Almeida Blades, and then Poirier and Benoit St. Denis. Those are my four favorite fights. So I want at least two fighters of those eight. And again, that's that rule is not going to have you like on a huge narrow path by any means. I just know I want exposure to those fights. At least two of them. I'll have probably three. I'll have four of them in some fights as well. But yeah, I missed that $3.20 entry max too, man. So I developed this late plan. I thought it was the perfect contest there. Still got the $3.50, $150 max though. Still think you can put 20 teams in there if you want. Some people put 150 in. Their last like 20 or 30 are pretty bad teams. That's why I started not 150 as much. I realized as I got later in my script. So can still put 20 in that. I think there's a nice one dollar out there too. Like the MMA or like the MME in MMA, though. What's going on, Jorge? Appreciate the support. I see my man Rummy in here as well. Sam's in here. Hope y'all doing well. AD watching. Appreciate that like, that subscribe, and that support as always. Let's keep it rolling. Next fight, plenty to talk about. 30 minutes in. I'll pick it up a little bit. Michelle Pereira, Michael Ola J check. Minus 140 is Pereira. Plus 120 is Michael O. This fight is minus 175 to finish. Pereira plus 130. Michael O plus 250. Pereira is going to be pretty. Uh, we haven't had 22%. So Pereira 22% at 8,700. Michael O 15%. I wouldn't be surprised if Pereira was a little lower owned than 22 just because of his money line. Like minus 140 at 8,700 isn't great, but you do see that plus 130 inside the distance prop 
which makes sense. Maybe he's in the low twenties. I mean, at this ownership and even as a pick for me, I'm taking Michael O. I think he's going to be able to keep it on the feet for the most part. I think Pereira, he's mixed in wrestling a little more as of late. I just don't know if he has the cardio to wrestle for 15. When it's on the feet, man, Michael, oh, he's going to be plotting forward, ripping to the body, combinations. I think at dog money, I think it, uh, it's more of a coin flip than this. So give me the dog, give me the 1,200 savings. And Michael, oh, Pereira, 22%, probably will be a little underweight to that. I thought he was going to be maybe like a little higher teens. And I could use him in lineups where I'm playing more chalky fighters. Jack Dell, I think, will be higher owned right in that range. I think Linz will be higher owned, or uh, Hugh Lava will be higher owned in that range. Only 200 more is Benoit. So I think he'll be overlooked a bit. And I'll play him in chalkier lineups. But Michael O, my preferred play for sure. What do you What do you got? Yeah, ownership wise, maybe I take a little bit away from him and throw a little bit more onto Saint Denis later. I uh, I could definitely see that as well. But yeah, I'm a I'm in agreement. I. I would rather have the underdog in this one, Michael Lowe. He's got one crappy win score on his call uh, on his fight log, but he's got six wins over a hundred points. He's even got a hundred and forty eight er. Um, and this is a guy that's just going to be pressuring forward, throwing bombs. And I think he's kind of alive to be landing takedowns in this one because Pereira is he's got a lot of lateral movement and he's kind of hard to read. And if if Michael Lowe can't just walk him down, I think he's going to try and clump, clinch him up, get him against the cage, and then maybe hunt for some takedowns there. And I think he could do some work in top control. So I think the takedowns are kind of even in this one. I think the knockout is kind of even in this one. Uh, so I would just rather have the underdog. In 87, even if Pereira does get a knockout, like, I don't know, he's probably got to land some takedowns as well if it's not in the first round. If it's like a third-round knockout, I don't know that Pereira is going to get there. But he can't throw some volume leading up to it. But we're in the big cage. He's going to be dancing around a lot. Um, 8,700 is just a lot to pay. So I would rather go underweight to him, get other favorites that I like more, and then Michael Lowe is an underdog I can see me being overweight on. I don't feel good about him scoring well in this fight, but he's an underdog who I think is live who does have a high ceiling. So I'll, I'll get some leverage to him and hopefully he could pull it out. I'm with you. Like this is a fight. It's favored to finish at minus 175, better in some other spots, but I am a little hesitant on this fight score. Like I do think prayer is going to be bouncing on the outside, try and stick and move with the jab, like not get in long combinations in a phone booth with Michael. O. I I don't think that's his best path to victory. And if he does like hold him against the fence a bit or try and mix in takedowns, yeah, like a second, even third round knockout, probably not enough for Pereira. That's why I prefer Michael O. Like any win, even 85, you're not completely dead. Still good win or inside the distance prop at 250 for the price. Yeah, Pereira is really just a ownership play. And that's like if he's 15% in chalk your lineups. But I don't like him too much. Definitely prefer Michael O in this one. So, yeah, we're lockstep here. Michael O for the win for me. Throws good volume. And, I, man, I think he can finish – uh, Michelle Pereira in this one. I'm saying second or third round knockout. So give me Mikey O in this one. We'll keep it rolling again. Appreciate everyone hanging out. Hope you guys are doing well. Like button, always appreciated. And if you want to join us at the nation, UFC 299, NBA today, PGA showdown, NASCAR Sunday, NHL, MLB will be here before you know it. Head over to the nation, all those sports, projections, ownership, core reports, slate plan, no better time. Get in. Hoop 15 gets you 15% off any package. And, of course, get in the Discord if you do join. Next fight, great one to target. Ian Kutalaba, Felipe Linz. Minus 125 is Kutalaba. Plus 105 is Linz. This fight, minus 500 to finish. Kutalaba, plus 100 inside the distance. Felipe Linz, plus 150. I mentioned this will be one of the fights. I'm jamming pretty heavy. Part of my rule of the four. As many Kutalaba fights are, dude, some wild man in round one, takedowns over four per 15 minutes. He has power in his hands, but if it gets to the second or third round, he falls off a cliff in terms of cardio. Lynn's solid cardio can be a little slow starter, so it's a pretty interesting fight. I mean, Kutalaba round one, Lynn's after that, not a hot take by any means. In terms of a pick, give me the guy that I think can fight 15 minutes in Lynn's, and what I like even more 8,400, 7,800. Build a lineup, put or put in Kutalaba, take Kutalaba out, plug in Linz. I think leaving that 600 plus is very viable. You're looking at almost a coin flip. Both have a ton of upside. 
I'm good leaving 600. I mean, even a thousand on this card, I think is definitely in play. So yeah, preferred side lens, not a strong take. I want a lot of this fight though. How do you see it? Yeah, I'm on the other side of this one. I like Kulaba in this one, but I do agree. I mean, most of his work is going to come in, in the first round, whereas Linz, most of it would come later in the fight, I think. But even the second round, man, I might favor Kulaba just because Linz does not push a pace that would really wear down Kulaba, and I think he would just have to really take a first-round beating and Ion slows down from that in order for him to come back. And if Linz isn't going to finish Kulaba in the second round, I feel like Kulaba can do enough to win on the scorecards, 29-28. And he can also land 10-plus takedowns in any given fight. But I, I do like him to get a first round knockout, a first round knockout at $8,400. I like quite a bit. We also have is almost a pick and fight. It, it was a pick and fight like this morning, I think. So, what happens if Lens closes as a slight favorite in this one? Does that then I like you lava? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I like more ownership. either way, but does Lens like is there a way he could be more owned? Because he, he really, I don't think he has the same type of ceiling as Kulaba. He did score. I mean, he had a quick win against OSP. That don't count. OSP. Right, yeah, but other than that, <laughs> like a 92 in the decision, I could see him getting 90 or something like that, which which would be solid at 7,800. But I think he's more likely to score 70 than he is 90, in my opinion. Wow. So I, I just really don't care for Lens that much. And I think the ownership is kind of climbing, and that's making me like him less. So I'll be underweight to Lens, overweight to Kulaba. Fair enough. I mean, yeah. I, I'd so love Linz's ceiling. I think like 90 more than seven at minus 140 for under one and a half rounds. I guess it's more of a bet against Kutalaba's like gas tank, and then like Linz would start to piece him up eventually, finish him. I do get what you're saying though. The upside for for Kutalaba, like I like the 600 savings, knowing he can fight 15 and being able to drop down. Like that, if you leave, go build a line with Kutalaba that leaves zero and go to Linz, you could be talking like a 50 dupe all the way down to like two or three. But you're talking lots of cheese in that main flagship for sure. It's interesting, though. If Linz closes the favorite, he, I feel like he'd have to be higher owned. But, again, people are sharp nowadays. Like, people know where ownership, game theory, et cetera. It always comes back to the Matthew uh, Samuelsberger, Jeremiah Wells fight. Wells was 8,400. Samuelsberger was 78. I think they closed like a coin flip or something. And Wells was higher owned at seventy or 84 compared to 78. And I – it had to have been people just thinking everyone would go the other side. And 150 maxers are obviously a lot of 150 maxers in the streets this week as well. So, yeah, I guess talking in circles, I'm still picking Linz. But, again, if I had 50% Kutalaba and I love my whole script and 30% Linz, like, I'm totally good with that. If someone's, I think someone scores well in this fight. I just prefer the savings, the guy that can fight longer. But definitely keep an, uh, an eye on this line. I think it will probably close somewhere around where it does now, though. At minus 125. And I also want to throw in, like, Kulaba went three rounds with Dustin Jacoby. It was a draw, but he scored 89 points in a draw without his win bonus. Like, he scored 80 points in the first Lynch round. He never score 89 points, like, without a win bonus. Like, he Lynch scored 80 in the first that. round. Yeah, he got all those takedowns, all that. Jacoby yeah. kept getting up. He kept dumping them. But that he still like, made it the distance. And I just think, like, he's got that in him. Linz does not have that in him. And if he's able to do that in this fight – I don't think Linz – I just don't agree with the line. I think Ulaba should be a little bit of a favorite in this one. I, I can't justify Linz being a favorite in this fight. Yeah. No, I mean, a cute Ulaba is minus 125. Linz is 105. So he's a small favorite, but I, I get what you're saying for sure. It's a great fight to target. It'll be the the Spain fight, this fight, Almeida Blades, Poirier, Saint-Denis, my favorite four fights on the card, and I'll have a decent bit of them. We'll keep it rolling. Plenty of fights to talk about. 14 fights. This is my least favorite fight on the card. Kyler Phillips, Pedro Munoz. Minus 204 for Phillips, plus 174 for Pedro. This fight's plus 200 to finish. Kyler Phillips, plus 300 inside the distance. Pedro Munoz, plus 550. Looking at Phillips, our ownership, we have him at 12%. We have Pedro Munoz at 13%. I mean, yeah. Pedro Munoz doesn't get finished. Doesn't get taken down, really. I think this fight stays on the feet. Pedro survived. I mean, I don't know. It's good. I think it's a pretty close split decision or a decision. I'd pick Pedro Munoz if I had to pick anybody. But, yeah, I mean, I'm fading this fight in DFS, so I don't even know why I'm wasting my time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree. I'm probably going to fade Phillips. 
just because 9,100 is a little bit too much. I am picking him to win just because I think he's going to be the faster, more explosive, more well-rounded fighter in this one, and will do enough to win two rounds. But if he's not getting a finish, I have a hard time seeing him score even 10x. But even if he does score 10x, he's probably not making the optimal lineup. So I'm just going to I want 100 him. plus. Yeah, I don't yeah, care about exactly. 10. You want 100 plus on this card. And then Munoz, I think he's live to get a win. It's probably more likely to be a decision, which would score, in my opinion, around 10x or more. That could be enough. But he's more live. Uh, to break the slate with a guillotine, in my in my opinion. And if Phillips is going out there looking for takedowns, Munoz has one of the nastiest guillotines. And if it's early, 90 points, I mean, that's going to be good enough. So I'll get a little bit of Munoz, uh, but not somebody I'm going to make it a point to target because I like other underdogs more. Do you think you'll have more Munoz or Parisian? Oof. Um, I would say Munoz more like more more live to win. But Parisian's more alive to break the slate if he wins. I'll probably be pretty close, maybe 15 each. Yeah, that makes sense. See, that's – when I look at dogs, especially and stuff, like I play in for that ceiling. I'm playing for that optimal. Like I think Munoz wins and he scores – is he's going to get 75 and maybe even 65. And even at that, like – I guess I'm saying this and we're about to get into Caitlin. I'm going to say Chukagi and I don't know what, Kamara, whatever it is. But, like, I guess I'm playing a little of her. So it's the same exact play as Pedro Munoz. I don't know. What about if you had to pick one of Chukagian or, or Munoz? I'm, I'm going to say Chukagian. I know she got married. It's what? Sermonara? I'm calling Kate. her Chukagian too. Uh, yeah, but I'm Caitlin fading Chukagian. Uh, so oh. Munoz for me. So Munoz, yeah. yeah. I look at them very similar though. Don't like the upside. I, if I played anyone, it'd be Pedro. Definitely fading Phillips. I don't like this fight though. It's a fight fade in 20. Entry in below for me. That is interesting too. I guess – with uh, without USADA, like these Brazilians, we're talking Kyler Phillips here. Luda the Klein looked huge last week. Like, is there any merit or is there anything you're changing in your process? I, no, mean, I think if they're me. cheating now, they were cheating with USADA and just getting away with it. Fair enough. Let's keep it rolling. Next fight on the card. I mean, this when you see this card on the prelims, this one you know it's a dope card. Mateus Gamrot RDA prelims. Come on now, minus four fifteen Gamrot. Plus 345 on the way back is RDA. This fight very likely to go the distance. Plus 215 to finish. Gamrot plus 240 inside the distance. RDA plus 900. Gamrot we have at 22%. RDA at 7%. So I'll throw it to you, I guess, on the fact. Were you surprised when you saw this line? Because I was pretty surprised to see Gamrot this big as a favorite with RDA at 155. I think it this line would be like minus 300 or something if it wasn't for RDA's last performance. Luke going eight for 11 on takedowns, 10 plus minutes of control time is not a good look when you're going against a chain wrestler and Gamrot. But man, that was at 170. Minus 415, that's a haul. If it's it's a dog or pass, if I'm betting it, there's no chance I'm laying four to one. But in DFS, I don't like RDA. He's going to be fighting off takedowns constantly. Gamrot's going to be relatively lower owned in this range. Sean O'Malley, 9,200 will be double the ownership. Despain, 9,300 will be double the ownership. I think Almabayev is higher owned for 100 more than Gamrot. We have 31 compared to 22. I'll be using Gamrot in chalkier lineups. I still don't love the upside. Like he can get there with takedowns, control time, but he just hasn't done it so far in the UFC. Like looking at all of his, uh, his scores, let me pull it up here. I had it. I don't think he's ever scored more than 109. Um, yeah, 108, 97, 103, 107, 86, 84. I'm not even convinced 108 is enough on this slate. Now, I think he has more than one 10-point upside. But, again, I like others in the range more. I like Despain more. I like Almabaya more, Benoit more. I'll use Gamera and chalkier lineups since I think he'll get overlooked a bit. I think he wins a decision. But, yeah, I'm curious to see what you say in this one. Yeah, I just agree with everything you said. I was surprised to see the line that high. <clears throat> I handicap every fight, and I had Gamrot. The highest I would cap him would have been minus 335. Um, so, like, I was trying to talk myself into an RDA play, but he's just getting up there in age, and I do think the most likely outcome is Gamrot's going to land one to two takedowns in each round, and probably that'll be enough because the striking will probably be close. But if you're going to tell me we got a 15-minute striking match, like, definitely – give me RDA even at a pick them line. I might, might be leaning with RDA there. 
So Gamrot needs the takedowns. And he's like minus 175 to win a decision here. Uh, it's going to be hard for him to pay off that price tag in a decision. And not only does he have to pay off the price tag, he's still got to beat the guy above him and the guy below him. And then other people below him as well. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'd am like to be underweight on Gamrot. But what you said about using him in chalkier lineups makes total sense. I'm, I'm completely cool doing that as well. And then RDA, I mean, I'm okay with some RDA, but I just like other underdogs more to where I'm not going to get much of them. Um, I mean, spoiler alert, main event, I like Cheeto Vera. So, like, a lot of my underdog is going to go to Cheeto. So, that's just going to take away from what I would get from RDA. But on a different card, I would think that I would be a little bit of, uh, above the field on RDA. On this card with 14 fights, I might X them out, to be honest with you, and just hope Gamrot wins with an 80. Yeah, I'm actually our RDA in 20 teams or less, just because I think he's going to be fighting off takedowns so much. And, like, you look at the inside the distance prop, plus 900. So, book saying he's not finishing. If he doesn't finish, you think at least one or two of those rounds, he's off his back a good amount. Like, just feels like the pass pretty thin, even in a win, to be on the optimal. I guess that's why I keep going back to Parisian, Joanne Wood, just because she throws a ton of volume. Like, I feel way better about her getting there in a decision. We'll get to some other dogs. You mentioned Cheeto. There's Dustin Poirier. Like, if – I guess I won't say that about Cheeto. If he wins, he's not guaranteed optimal. If Dustin Poirier wins, I find it very hard to see him not being optimal. So, I'll be playing those dogs. If they win, I feel good about them being there. RDA, even in a win, just like Pedro Munoz, I, I don't think it's anywhere close to a lock. I think it could be a pretty low score. We'll keep it going. Next fight on the card, Rummy asked the question. How many air punches in this one? Caitlin Chukagian, what is it? Seminaro. We're going to say Chukagian. We do know she is married, though. Caitlin Chukagian, Macy Barber. Barber minus 205. Chukagian plus 175. This fight's plus 240 inside the distance. Most likely to go the distance on the card. All the win equity or finishing equity on the Barber side. Plus 265 inside the distance. Chukagian plus 900. Looking at ownership in this one. Excuse me, uh, Macy Barber, 10%, Caitlin Chukagian, Seminara, whatever, 9%. Not a fight I like at all. I mean, you look at Macy Barber, you need what she did last fight against Amanda Hebas. Her best victory to date, second round TKO, came out guns blazing, put it on her. She still only scored 107. Now, I would take 107 at 10% for 8,800 any day of the week on this card. But before that, she scored 69, 63, 79, and 54. None of those are going to get close to getting there. I'll throw it to you. I mean, Chukagian, I look at kind of like Pedro Munoz. I kept her in my pool. I think she's a little likely to score a little more than Pedro, a little more volume maybe. Women's MMA, I feel good about the dog. But, man, I put this fight as underweight both, cap them both at like 10 to 15. And if I get none of this fight and I love my exposures, I'd be totally happy with that as well. So, yeah, another lineup or another fight where if you're really chalky and you land on one of these people, I think it's fine because uh, they're definitely going to be low on. What about you? I'm just going to X this whole fight out and make it a 13-fight card. Um, but I put it as a two-star which a lot of the times I, f I completely fade my two stars on our fight rankings, but I've only had one one star so far. That was the Loma, the last Loma fight. And if I put a one star, that's me saying like, you should X this out of your lineups as well. Um, but in this one, like I could see it making the optimal lineup. Chukagi inside just with a win, maybe scoring 80 points could get her there. And then the Barber side, she does have the higher ceiling with her takedown upside. And she does have TKO upside as well. She scored over a hundred three times. And it's the ownership on the barber side that makes it like, okay, you can play a little bit of barber if you want to. But I'm just going to X both sides out, hope that barber does win 29-28 and scores 75 points, something like that. I think that's the most likely outcome, um, and, and that's just what I'm hoping is going to happen. And that won't make the optimal lineup. So I'm going to X them both out, make it a little bit easier for myself. Yeah, I definitely can't argue that one bit. I just mainly had it. So you like to if you had to pick the Kyle, you like the Kyler Phillips Munoz fight over this one if you had to pick. So yeah, if if I had um I actually did have one lineup where I where I had seventy four hundred left for my last spot. I threw uh, Chukag. I'm gonna call her Chukag and I threw yeah. her in there and I was like, you know, now nah, I'm not, I'm taking her out and I put in so I just left money on the table. I don't know if it was Munoz or whatever it was, uh, yeah. but I'm just gonna not play her. And I think if she wins and Munoz wins, 
Um, I think even even if they're both decisions, I would still take Munoz. I think. Okay. Oh okay. yeah. I mean, we're talking two of the worst fights on the card, in my opinion. It sounds like your opinion as well. Yeah. So not one. If, if you're only playing a couple lineups, I think you cross it off. Even if you got twenty, I think you can cross it off. I'll be capping them for sure. We got what six fights left on the card, and man, you won't. You might not find six better fights back to back to back to back to back than you're gonna get right here. Again, we are giving away a free monthly membership um, from our man. I have six roles. So shout out to you in the Discord. I have six roles. Very funny name. Shout out to you giving away a monthly membership. If you're not a member, put in the YouTube chat why you're not, why you want one. Big Marley will pick in a couple fights. So be on the lookout um, if you want to scroll up, whatever it may be. And if you have a couple people and you need me to like pick a number, like one, two, three, whatever it may be, assign a name to someone. We can do that as well, but I'm going to put you in charge of that. But we talk about the next fight, the closest line fight on the card. Pretty much a straight pick them. Curtis Blades, Jailton Almeida, 8,200 Blades, 8K for Jailton. Like I said, the odds depends where you look. You look on Bet Online, you got Almeida minus 113, Blades minus 107. You go to FanDuel, straight pick them, minus 110 apiece. DraftKings, minus 112, minus 110. Flip a coin. This fight is going to be in my rule. Like I mentioned, four fights. This will be another fight that I will have at least one, or at least two fighters of this fight. Benoit fight, Lynn's fight, and the Spain fight. This fight is favored to finish. Minus 250. Junior or Almeida plus 130 inside the distance. Blades plus 185. Take it away, man. I guess does Almeida get the takedowns? Because it feels like Almeida needs the takedowns. Blades. I guess needs to keep it on the feet, but I don't know. This is obviously of all the fights throughout this whole card, people are complete on everyone's on a different side. It feels like, and some people feel very strongly about their side of their own. I don't know how you feel strongly on either side. I don't, but yeah, take it away. Maybe you can talk me into some. Yeah. Just a great fight to target. <clears throat> Whoever you're on, get, get leverage on them. Maybe even go like 60, 30, something like that. Um, both of them, top two wrestlers in the division, are, are up there anyways. They both have knockout power, but Blaze just has no chin. Like, Almeida's only got knockout power because he's a big, strong dude. He's got no real striking, though, so he's going to have to just land something that he throws out. Not It's not even going to be technical, but if he can land a hard shot on Blades, he can knock him out in any round. But Blades is going to be the better striker, the more likely TKO artist, in my opinion. And... I'm picking Blades to be the better wrestler as well. Almeida, he was a light heavyweight, and he just came up to heavyweight because he was getting a bunch of scrubs who didn't know how to wrestle. Now he's getting the best wrestler in the division, and he had, I think he had 16 pounds on him today at weigh-ins. I think that shit's going to come into play. So if Blades can hold up, I don't expect much. I expect nothing off uh, from Blades off his back if Almeida can get takedowns. Whereas maybe Almeida can throw up an arm bar or something like that if Blades is getting takedowns. But in my opinion, Blades is going to be the better wrestler in this one, the more likely guy to be on top. And he's also the better striker. So he has more ways to win this fight. I've lost a lot of money back in Blades, though. My, I, I don't yeah. think I ever pick against this guy. Uh, so it, it wouldn't be my first time being wrong. But my side that I'm going to get leverage on will be Blades. But I will be close to all in on this fight. Like maybe I'll be 60-30 on the blade side. Um, but at the same time, I probably want my favorite Blades lineup to just have the duplicated other five and then throw Almeida in there as well. Just target this fight however you want to. Um, I actually had Blades as the lower owned in my projected ownership, so that made me like him even more. I just feel like I've heard a lot more people talking about Almeida this week, and recency bias uh, is always playing a part, so I think that's going to make Blades a little bit lower owned than he should be, but I expect the winner to be on the optimal lineup. Yeah, we have 33%, 38, 33 for Blades, 38 Almeida. Blades is 200 higher owned, and at some books, he's a dog. Like, I, I think they're going to be similar, but I think you're probably right. Like, I don't see anything wrong with 38, 33. I see it pretty similar. I will say, though, I see on MMA Junkie, Almeida weighed in at 261 and Blades 257. No, it was 241. They heard that 240. wrong. 240. Okay, I was going to say, I don't know how, what, because he went in at 236. Uh, his last fight, which is his heaviest. I was going to say, how does – because he made 205 with ease earlier, and he just decided to go up because Parker Porter said, I'll fight you. And he'll, yeah. of course he'll fight Parker Porter. He hasn't moved down. So 241. Yeah, pretty 251, sure 241, 257. 
Okay. Yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense. I was going to say, man, 261, I've been able to go watch the way in. So, yeah, I, if I, my pick was Almeida, and it, I mean, there's no confidence on it. I just think he can take the, I think he's going to try and wrestle. I mean, he's going to shoot a spear double leg, I think, to start, or he's going to try and wrestle from the jump. And I think he can find the back of Blades. Like, Blades just, not many try and take him down. People have had success. If he's off his back or he's, Got his back taken though, like that's that's Almeida's world. Great grappler for sure. Now I'm not confident at all because if he can't get those takedowns, I mean Blades definitely has to be. The, we don't know really about Almeida striking, but I don't know how Blades isn't the superior striker. I've got, I mean, I've been on Blades a lot recently as well. Losses, I think he's a stud. The chin's worrisome though, and I just don't know about the takedown defense against a guy like Almeida. And again. Even if you do with the ownership, though, like you build a lineup, you have Blades, you go down Blades to Almeida, don't think you're slick by that. Even if you leave 200, you're not really getting too much of a dupe um, reduction or whatever the right words are just because you're saving 200. So pick your favorite. Again, this is why I think playing multiple lineups in MMA is the way to go, though. Like, good luck playing one lineup and picking which one's right. Your guy loses, then you're done for the night. That's just not... It's not for me personally. So great fight to target mid tier ever so slightly with Lean Almeida. But if I had 60 40 blades and loved everything else, I'd also be fine with that. It's not a fight I'm going to make a big stand on personally. Still five fights left to go. Almost an hour again. Appreciate it. Still, everyone tuning in and watching. They do want that membership, I can tell. So, Big Marley, uh, we'll do it. We'll talk about Peter Young, Song Yudong. We'll talk about Gilbert Burns, Jack Della. Then after that, if you got someone or you got a couple options, you need me to pick a number or something, we'll pick one in two fights. Peter Yong's, Peter Yong, Peter Yan, Song Yedong, minus 122 is Peter Yan, plus 102 is Song Yedong. This fight's plus 195 to finish. Peter Yan, plus 375 inside the distance, Song Yedong, plus 400, right in the mid tier, 8,300, 7,900. Peter Yan, 16%. Song Yudong, 16%. Man, this is not a fight I want to target much either. I think this fight goes all 15 minutes. Peter Yan's a slow starter himself. We only have three rounds to work. So even if he wins, I don't think he finishes Song Yudong, who's very tough. I actually think the inside of the distance prop, I think Song's more likely for a finish than Peter Yan. So like that 375, 400, I would have it flipped. I think Song Yudong hits harder. I mean, Corey Sandhagen said it was the hardest he's been hit. It was by Song Yudong. The leg kicks are nasty. He's technical. Still young, only getting better. Peter Yan's still 31. It was, what, four fights ago? People were calling him the bantamweight goat. One knee, changed his whole career. I just, I don't like the upside really for either guy. I think Song's more likely for, to finish. And with that $400 savings, he fits more of my builds, I guess, at 7,900. So not a fight I like. I don't like Yan. I'll be fading him. Underweight song, yeah. Give me song if I had to pick, though. Yeah, I pretty much agree just with everything you said. I mean, I can't. I love this fight. I can't wait to watch it. I'm I'm really high on both of these guys. I expect a high level striking match. Either one of them could mix in a couple takedowns. Either one of them could get a knockout. But I expect a very close, high level fight where the winner probably scores right around 10x. But I would guess uh, it's more likely under 10x rather than over. So I'm going to try and get away from this fight. I'm not going to X either one of them out of my player pool, but I would guess that I end up with more Yudong because he's $400 cheaper. Uh, but I, I'm picking Yan, actually. I think he's just a little bit crisper of a striker, a little bit more likely to wrestle. So I picked Yan to get the win, probably just 29-28. But, I mean, ownership is the same, so I'd rather save the money. But if, y if Yudong was going to be like 25 and Jan 15, then definitely give me Jan as my preferred player. Like you could definitely change my mind on my preferred play in this one, but ideally um, I'm just avoiding this fight and I'll be underweight to both of them. I do not see this being in a single entry. Yeah, no, I, I think your ownership's right at 16, both like that blades Almeida fight right there at 82 AK lens cute 84 78. Like this is the fight in the mid tier. If you want to get different, you can go here. Personally, I'd rather go to, Josh Parisian for sub 10%. I'd rather go to Gamrot. I'd rather go to the Calder or the Wood Morose fight. Like, I just don't love – it's hard for me to see this fight outscoring the Lynx fight, this fight outscoring the Almeida fight. Yeah, 
this is pretty much what I'm trying to get at. So not much interest. I'll pick Song, but if I have none of this fight in 20 and below, I'm totally good with that too. Great fight here coming up, and then we will have uh, Big Marley pick out our monthly winner um, courtesy of I Have Six Rolls. Shout out to I Have Six Rolls. Jack Della, Madalena, Gilbert Burns. Great clash of styles right here. Minus 170, Jack Della. Plus 145, Gilbert Burns. Fights minus 200 to finish. Uh, Jack Della, plus 140 inside the distance. Gilbert Burns, plus 210. Jack Della, 8,600, 24%. We have Gilbert Burns, 7,600, 18%. I mean, just going like Peter Yan Almate or Peter Yan Song Yidong fight, I like Gilbert Burns more than both of them in a vacuum. Like, I could go build a team, 8,300, 8, Yan, take him out, leave the 700 with Gilbert Burns. I just think there's more upside in this one. It's Jack Dell on the feet, it's Gilbert Burns on the mat, fights favored to finish. Who's going to get the best of it, I guess? So I'll throw it to you on that note. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to this one. I'm picking Jack Della Madalena because I do think most of the fight takes place on the feet. He's the better boxer, going to be the higher level striker, higher volume striker as well. <clears throat> so I think he ultimately wins two, if not all three rounds. But Burns is one of the best grapplers in the division. He's got knockout power as well. So I agree. It's kind of like uh, I would rather just throw – Burns in rather than a Yan and a Yadong and, and leave that salary on the table. But I, I do know that I'm hunting for underdogs on this card. Um, and I have Burns in my 10 or so that I've built already. I don't love clicking. Like, I'm not starting my lineup there, but I, I feel like I'm usually like around 7,800 or so for my last spot. So a Burns right there is completely cool with me. Uh, and it, it would need to come through the ground. I don't think Burns can win a three-round striking match here. I think he could knock Madeline we'll out. Him. Yeah, that's but what I he see could too. also win two rounds with takedowns and uh, grappling control, or he could just submit him in any round. Like, he's dangerous. We saw uh, JDM get taken down. How many times was he taken down by the, the newcomer? Three. Half a, I think it was three. One was reversed. Just three. three, three felt like a lot three more than three. three. <laughs> but you're right. Because what he did, he was on top. And then he got a reversal, too, in the third that ended up on top, too. Was You're it right. But, I mean, shit, Burns might not need three takedowns. Might just take Burns one. Yeah. Uh, but I also think it's it's close enough to where I'm picking JDM. But even my favorite JDM lineup, like, I'm not against just saving a 1000 leaving leaving $1,000 on the table and throwing Burns in there as well because I do think this could be an important fight. But it also could play out so close where it's like JDM – wins the first round, Burns wins the second, JDM wins the third, and then we don't make it on the optimal lineup. So I'm not really going to force anything with this fight. I'm cool with whatever the solver wants to give me, to be honest with you. And I'd be okay with either one of them in my single entry, but, it, but I know for a fact, by the way I've been building my lineups, Burns is more likely to be in my single entry. Yeah, I mean, everything you said is pretty much how I wrote it too. My preferred play is Burns, but a lot of that has to do with that, A, we need dogs on the card, that thousand seventy six hundred goes a long way, and I mentioned earlier. I think you can leave a thousand on this card because I totally think you can go Jack Della down to Burns, leave that thousand. Like you, when you play GPPs, you play for upside. Like the project. Like when some people ask in Discord, does projections mean much in MMA? No, not at all. What the projections pretty much telling you? We take into account the money line odds, the inside of the distance props, the fight pace, etc. And it's just more of like a. It's a mean number. Like in a loss, in a win, you take all those outcomes and you get an average score. You don't care about average when it comes to GPPs. You need not only six for six, you, especially in the flagship, need the nuts pretty much. So when they win, how much do they score? I think Burns has just as much upside as Jack Della. He has first round sub upside. He is, throws hard overhands. He could clip Jack Della. Now, if it's on the feet, he needs a knockout, I think. Otherwise, he's just going to get pieced up. But yeah, plus 145. I mean, that's not crazy at all. All the upside, you leave that $1,000, you could be looking at a solo ship or shipper for six figures. So, yeah, I preferred play is Burns because of the 1,000 savings because that can leave money and get a little different there. But I still like Jack Dell a lot at 8,600 too. And 8,600, more people will go to Benoit St. Denis. Jack De Dell is definitely going to get some ownership, but Cuda Lava is cheaper. The Almeida Blades is cheaper. I don't think his ownership is going to be crazy. 
Now, I agree with you on the last point before we keep it rolling. Three fights left. This wasn't one of the fights in my rules, though, because I could totally see Burns wins round one with takedowns control. Maybe a little tired. Jack Dell makes adjustments. Now, he does stuff the takedowns. He pieces them up, and we get to round three, pretty much one apiece, and neither have scored great. Even a third-round finish might not be enough. So not a fight I'll be all in on. 14 fights, too, make it even where you need a higher score. You need probably 90-plus from Jack to feel good. You need 80, 85-plus from Burns. There's a path where Jack wins a decision, like I said, and probably scores like 85, and it's not enough, but – yeah, good fight to target. I lean the burn side if I have to pick. You have uh, got the winners for us? Yeah, yeah, I do. We got J-Dubs. I'm going to go with J-Dubs for the free month. Uh, and then uh, – Hold know, on. I'll, I'll read this off. Free monthly would be awesome. I'm a fan since the beginning. I do my own taste of research, but it would be a cherry on top. Love that, J-Dubs. So you have multiple. Love Burns here. He's been talking a lot, so – that's the first winner, and then go ahead, Big Marley. Tell the and people. Yeah, big card. So let's get a second one in here as well on the house. Um, let's see. I got one. I got one. I got All one. All right, take the next one. I love this comment right here. I watch every every UFC event since Usman Covington. Watched every Ship It Nation, UFC, and PGA with Tambo and Hoop. UFC and PGA rule all other sports. Hey, I like I like that comment too. Would love the membership. You deserve the membership. MMA, PGA, I believe the best in the business we have over here in both sports. PGA going on, a lot of showdown content, so you get in the streets. You can still get in there for this weekend. Get some MMA content as well. We appreciate that. Rigatone, I'm going to say Rigatone Schnappy, Rigatoni Schnapp. There you go. Rigatoni Schnapp and KKJ Dubs. All you have to do to claim that monthly membership, again, shout out to I Have Six Rolls and The House. We we're feeling generous today. UFC 299. All you got to do in email at inf, or info at chipandnation.com. So take a picture of your YouTube. I should say that again. You got to do more than that. Take a picture of your YouTube account so we know it's you, Rigatoni. So we know it's you, KK. Email info at chipandnation.com. You'll get in a free month on I Have Six Rolls and I, on the house. Get in the Discord when you do join too. That does come with that package. So shout out to you too. Hey, there we go. You're welcome. You're absolutely welcome, guys. We appreciate you guys hanging out. Appreciate everyone. If you didn't win and you do want to join us, though, for the nation, you won't find a better price, better content out there. A lot of sports going on this weekend. A lot of money to be made. Use that promo code HOOP15 for 15% off. If you just want to try weekly to see what we got, great time to use the weekly. $25 a week. No Discord access, though. Otherwise, monthly, six-month, annual Three fights left, Big Marley, Kevin Holland, Michael Page. Minus 132 is Kevin Holland. Plus, oh, moved down a little bit when I was speaking. Minus 131 now, plus a 111 on the way back for uh, Page. Plus 115 for this fight to finish. Kevin Holland, plus 200. Michael Page, plus 400. Odds in this, or ownership in this one, Kevin Holland, 8,500, 15%. We have Michael Page, 7,700, 19%. My quick thoughts, similar to the, I guess not quite the Song Yudong fight. Which one was it earlier? Oh, I'm drawing a blank. I guess it was none of them, I guess. I, kind of like the Marina Moreau's Joanne Wood fight, but I even like that fight more. I don't like this fight much because Kevin Holland's easiest path to victory is takedowns. The dude literally, I mean, it's the same fight as Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, it feels like. He took Wonderboy down, was getting pieced on the feet, and invited him right back up, eventually throws in the towel after four. If he doesn't wrestle, it's going to be a 15-minute striking match. I don't see it scoring well if it goes the distance. Even a third-round knockout probably doesn't get there. Over two and a half is minus 165. Over one and a half is minus 360. It's going to be low-owned. You can use Kevin Holland in lineups that are chalkier since he'll be pretty low-owned. But if I have to pick a side, I mean, I'm picking Page. And I'm definitely taking the that's eight hundred dollar difference at seventy seven hundred, because maybe eighty five is enough or seventy five hundred is enough. I just I don't think Kevin Holland's striking. He needs a knockout early, and I just don't think that really happens. So Page is my preferred play, but I don't love this fight to be honest. Yeah, I, I don't love the fight either, but I think it's like a lesser version of the last one we just talked about, where I'm picking Holland 
the favorite to win. I think he has more paths to victory. I think he's going to be the better wrestler, grappler in this one. And I also think he's the better or not better striker, just a higher volume striker. Like, he landed 127 strikes against JDM. I don't think Paige even has that in his game because he's just like a karate style. Let me back back up and then pick my shots, and then when I throw, it's going to be awkward and it's going to be dangerous. Um, and, and I don't know where these stats came from on Michael Page on UFC, UFCstats.com. I mean, they look great. I don't know what fight that would have been in, though, but I don't think those are real. Uh, but I think Paige is really just in play for a finish if page does win a decision it's probably going to be a more boring fight uh and i don't think either one of them would make the optimal lineup but it's just going to be a lot easier for page to make it in the decision i think at his price tag so even though i'm picking against him i would rather just take the underdog in my lineups because he does have big power like he could knock out holland with something weird that he doesn't see coming holland's durable though so i just don't think that it's likely and the most um I mean, I guess the most likely outcome is that Holland wins at least two rounds on the scorecards and he just doesn't hit 10x or he gets right around 10x and that's probably not going to cut it on this card. So I'm trying to get away from this fight, but I do know that Paige is right there in the underdogs where I'm landing around. So he's going to be just like a, a Gilbert Burns to me. Uh, my favorite Gilbert Burns lineup, I'll probably take him out, put Paige in there and have the same type of lineup. Uh, but they're both similar where I think uh, Paige – has the higher ceiling with a knockout, but Burns is going to score better in a decision, I think. Yeah, I, I'm definitely yeah. I I like Burns a good bit more than Page personally. I I just feel like I, Page is fine because he he has power. He can knock out Holland, but Holland great chin, great durability. Even if he does get rocked or something, maybe you then try and wrestle or something. At the end of the day, I just don't like this fight much. Holland, I'll use in chalky lineups to get different. Page, if I fall on him, 7,700, yeah, he's live for a knockout or something. I think this fight goes 15. I mean, at this point, if it goes 15 minutes, you want to be holding a dog ticket. It feels like these judges got no clue what's going on. But Kevin Holland has to throw more volume, so it feels like it would be a Kevin Holland decision. Two fight left, baby. Two insane. Actually, I don't know. I could see the main event being a little boring. It's fun fight on paper. I don't see how this fight's boring, though. Both of these five-round fights – Benoit Saint Denis, Dustin Poirier, as good as it gets. Minus 210 is Benoit Saint Denis. Plus 180 is Dustin Poirier. This fight's minus 450 to finish. Benoit Saint Denis, minus 160. Dustin Poirier, plus 260. Looking at the ownership in this one, we have Benoit at 49%. I see Marley making a little adjustments. I like that. Benoit, 49%. Dustin Poirier, 31%. I'm on I'm on Benoit, dude. I, I don't know if this dude can be beaten. Like it I tried, I tried Steamroller. I tried to get on Steamroller last time. It was a solid fight, but I don't know how you can like finish Benoit Saint Denis. I mean, Zaleski Dos Santos had the chance. The ref still didn't do it. He showed all heart. He's just the cardio looks fine. Very physically strong. The body kicks he throws is nasty. The pressure. And when he gets you down, he is so strong. DP, by far the best guy he's fought. I guess what DP is it, though? Is it Prime? Poirier, I did see my man up here. Let me see if I can pull it up. What's going on, Robin? It was at Salt Lake City. I lost a lot of cheese on Poirier that night, but he saw me in the bar after. It was great seeing you. I recognize you. He's talking. Poirier fought last time. He's fighting this week. Hopes for another Poirier KO. I don't know. If he does the KOing. I don't want him to get a KO. I'll say that. I think Benoit eventually gets a sub, takes him down. What do you see in this one? Yeah, I mean, Benoit is like the scariest guy in the UFC right now. He looks pretty unstoppable. <laughs> um, and, I mean, he could score with really any outcome. He could get a knockout, score well. He could get a submission, score well. Or he could just rack up takedowns. He's got five rounds to work with. He could rack up takedowns in each round and score 150-plus points in a decision here as well. So he's one of my favorite plays on the entire card but Poirier is one of my favorite fighters of all time so I still kind of want to root for him um the the, it, the ownership's probably going to be up there enough where I can't really get much leverage on him but I'm gonna definitely get a good amount of Poirier lineups as well I'll be pretty close to all in on this fight this is probably my favorite fight if I was going to be 100% on anyone uh, I think this would be the fight for me to go all in on and maybe I will 
but I'm not going to make it a rule. I'll just try and look at my percentages, make sure they're at least 90% or so, uh, but give me BSD to get a finish. Yeah, I agree. This would be the fight if I had to go all in. I heard your alarm. I know you got to roll. Pick up the kid. Last fight, O'Malley, Chito Vera. O'Malley minus 255, Chito plus 215. Coin flip for this fight to finish. Looking at the ownership quick, then I'll throw it to you. We'll get on out of here. 43% for O'Malley. Chito Vera, 38%. Take it away. I know you mentioned Chito earlier, but what you see. And then if you want to touch on Francis and Anthony Joshua tonight, if you have any take on that, you can as well. No, I didn't even know that was tonight. Um, but I'll hit on this one. I like Cheeto Vera in this fight. Um, I definitely think that O'Malley's the more skilled striker, especially early in the fight, like rounds one and rounds two. But, man, five-round Cheeto is one of my favorite strikers, like that three through five rounds. I'm not sure that Cheeto doesn't have a striking edge in, in the last half of this fight. And I also think that Cheeto is the better grappler in every round of this fight. I think he's more durable. Not only his chin, but his legs as well. Um, and he's already beat O'Malley in the first round, which is when you would expect to, for O'Malley to be looking best. And I've, I've heard a lot of people talking about like, yeah, Vera's a slow starter, but O'Malley's so high volume. I just don't see how, how Vera can keep up with it. I mean, O'Malley landed eight strikes in his last yeah. fight in the first round. It was a five-minute striking match. He landed eight strikes. He's landed over 100 strikes against two scrubs who have no business being in the UFC but he's never even landed uh, 90, 90 strikes against anybody other than those two scrubs. Um, I think Vera could beat him on volume. Uh, I think this line is disrespectful. 30% for Vera. I think that's super disrespectful. I think it's a lot. I think he's uh, uh, over 40% uh, it's likely to win this fight. So give me Vera. I will have him in more than half of my lineups. He is on my core plays over at shippinnation.com. Go sign up to see the other two. But yeah, fight rankings will be posted in the next couple hours. Uh, feeling good about this card. I think we're going to ship it. Oh, yeah. I love it. Man, not much too, too much to add. We did have money coming on Vera the past couple of days. Plus 250 it got down to. Now it's plus 210. I'll just say I don't love this fight much. I'll be underweight because I do. Cheeto, slow starter. I do agree with that. I do think Sugar wins the early rounds. At 38%, even a fourth round Cheeto knockout. Yeah, you would take it. But I think this fight, I and mean, I think O'Malley by decision is the most likely outcome. I don't think he scores enough at 92 compared to the other people around him. Then you wouldn't go Vera. This ownership, like I said, over 40 for O'Malley, 38 for Vera we have. Over 80% people paying this fight. I'll be underweight, hoping for a Malley decision. Um, and, yeah, I really like the Benoit Poirier fight. If you play both five-rounders, you know you got to do something a little different. Very viable on this 14-fight card. But underweight this fight, hoping O'Malley by decision, though. Yeah, I think if I I prefer Cheeto than O'Malley if I had to pick just one fighter, though. I know you got to run and pick up the kids. Good stuff is always big, Marley. UFC 299, very pumped for it. All the content will be up. Uh, again, his fight rankings will be done a couple hours. Projections, ownership already up. My slate plan, everything will be up within the next hour again. Shout out to you, KK and Rigatoni. Email info at chippinnation.com. Take the picture of the YouTube Shout out, I have six rolls. Good luck tonight, everybody. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe on the way out. Let's win some money for USC 299. Let's see some Shipping Nation logos up top. Good luck, Big Marley. Good stuff as always. Big Marley, Untitled Town. Be safe. Have a good weekend.